c'est ça Gauthier Ich begrüße Sie sehr, sehr herzlich, liebe Gäste, cher Jean-Paul Gauthier, als Präsidentin der Deutschen Filmakademie zu unserer zehnten Ausgabe von Mein Film. Um, now I see that you're sitting here and nobody's translating for you, right? Um, and I was going to say these little words in English, but I try to, to, set, to tell them in German. Oh, oh, how sweet of you. Thank you very much. <laughs> also, diese Reihe, diese Reihe, diese Veranstaltung gibt unseren Gästen ja immer die Gelegenheit, über ihre Liebe zum Kino, über ihre sehr eigenen Erfahrungen und über die Bedeutung eines ganz besonderen Films in ihrem Leben zu reden. Und wir können in dieser Reihe wirklich auf ein paar sehr spannende Gäste, wie auch auf deren oftmals sehr unerwartete ähm, Filmauswahl zurückblicken. Heute haben wir wieder einen ganz besonderen Gast hier, unter uns, zwischen uns, über uns. Ähm, ich kann dazu nur sagen, ähm, Jean-Paul Gaultier hat zumindest in meinem modischen Leben eine sehr, sehr große Rolle gespielt. Für seine ironischen, ziemlich abgefahrenen Modelle habe ich bereits in den 70er und 80er Jahren in seiner legendären Boutique in den Pariser Arkaden, die eigentlich gar nicht wirklich eine Boutique war, sondern es war wie so ein Theater, ähm, den Großteil meiner Gagen verpulvert. Äh, es hat sich übrigens immer gelohnt, ähm, ich blieb nie unbeobachtet. Ich habe mir auch heute ganz viel Mühe gegeben, in die Farbenpracht von Jean-Paul Gaultier ähm, zu fallen. Ich kann nur sagen, Jean-Paul Gaultier hat einfach alles auf den Kopf gestellt und er hat alle Regeln über den Haufen geworfen. Und mit dieser Haltung hat er nicht nur mich, sondern viele, viele andere mitgerissen, verführt und verzaubert. Ähm, er ist ein Zirkusdirektor, ein Clown, ein Freigeist, einer, der sich nicht einordnen ließ. Und ähm, ich kann nur hier an dieser Stelle sagen, ich weiß nicht, wer von Ihnen schon die Show im Friedrichstadtpalast gesehen hat. Ähm, es lohnt sich. Man wird ähm, durch eine gesamte Epoche seiner Schaffenskraft, ähm, und es geht ja nicht nur um, um die Schaffenskraft von Jean-Paul Gaultier, sondern es geht einfach wirklich um um das Erkennen von Zeit und er war immer weit vorne und ähm, es lohnt sich wirklich, sich diese Show anzuschauen. Heute feiern wir mit Ihnen, lieber Jean-Paul Gaultier, dem Publikum und äh, unseren Partnern das Kino, das ja auch zu einem großen Teil zu Ihrem Leben gehört. Ich möchte mich an dieser Stelle sehr herzlich bei der Astor Film Lounge, dem Theaterleiter Jürgen Friedrich und seiner Kollegin Frau Hoppe bedanken. Sind Sie da? Wenn Sie da sind, kurz aufstehen. Ebenso bei Carsten Kollmorgen und seinem Team vom Hotel Sofitel Kurfürstendamm. Auch Ihnen herzlichen Dank. Danke vielmals. Bei Piet Riedmüller, mit dem wir diese Reihe gemeinsam kuratieren und besonders auch bei Josu Juric, dem wir unseren heutigen wunderbaren Gast zu verdanken haben. Und, jawohl, danke Josu. Und natürlich, wie immer und sehr, sehr gerne bei Claudius Seidel von der Frankfurter Allgemeinen Sonntagszeitung. Das Gespräch im Anschluss äh, mit Jean-Paul 
Gauthier wird der wunderbare Kollege Christian Berkel führen, worauf wir uns schon wirklich alle sehr freuen können. Vorher möchte ich aber Jean-Paul Gauthier begrüßen und jetzt, um wirklich zu erfahren, warum er sich diesen, warum seine Wahl auf diesen Film gefallen ist und äh, was dieser Film für ihn bedeutet. Herzlich willkommen, bienvenue, Jean-Paul Gauthier. <laughs> thank you very much. I am very happy to be here tonight with you and thank you to come. And uh, I should say I am happy to see that movie, uh, to be uh, in Berlin, of course. But what I am very happy, it's because now I am here for cinema. On cinema, it's exactly the thing that make me make my work in fashion. Because how did I start to come to fashion? It's looking at the TV. Yes, it was not in the cinema because I was too young at that time. It was an old movie about fashion. And through that movie, through that movie, I wanted to do that. What he was doing, the designer with his muse, which was an actress. And I, of course, felt in love with the actress. And I wanted to be like the one which is in love with the actress. So I wanted to do in some way kind of fashion movie. It was about a couturier, so I learned from that because it was a very good portrait of a couturier and of a uh, house of couture, you know. So I wanted after to do exactly that thing. So in some way, always my fashion has been through movies and I've been influenced with movie. So I always admire him and uh, I w went, uh, uh, he knew, uh, he proposed me to make the clothes for that movie and I saw him And I was, of course, I fell in love with him in some way by, by his talent and how, when he was ex explaining me how should be the movie. You know, it was, I felt like a little boy that when you say a story and you, you see how he was living the story and it was wonderful. So I didn't read the scenario, but I, I, I say yes, like that, you know. And uh, the thing that is funny that I can tell you already, that it was done in, in reality in two times my work. Two times why? Because there was a first, uh, um, a not a version, but it was supposed to be a movie in two parts. First part, second part. It was supposed to be with Julia Roberts and, uh, and the man was maybe Mel Gibson, you know, and with Prince doing the one which was, a, yeah, it was supposed to be that. But, 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 like it was a two big budget movie. They couldn't do it, uh, the Gaumont alone, they have to do it with American. So it was canceled and it was postponed. Me, when he said that it was, all, all the, my work was already done, you know, but uh, like it was postponed, I thought when in, in fashion, when something is postponed, finish, after it doesn't go anymore, you know. In cinema, it's different. So some years after that I have worked with, uh, come on, Peter Greenaway, uh, Pedro Almodovar and Genet, ah, came back, but with not the same people. It was no more Julia Roberts, it was Mila Jovovich, that I know as a model, and it was Bruce Willis, in, and it was no more Prince, uh, so it was Chris Tucker, that was just his first movie, I think, you know. And we have to readapt a little, of, uh, even the clothes, you know, for them, you know. Uh, so it was fantastic, uh, excellent experience. And the thing that was very interesting, it was that it was a science fiction movie. Me, which were not a part, uh, um, a part someone, I was not so much into a science fiction movie. But like it was Besson, I wanted to do, uh, to work on it. So I did, and it was a fabulous experience. And maybe I will tell you something about it a little later. But for the moment, I let you see the movie, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I did to work on it. Bonsoir, Jean-Paul Gauthier. <laughs> What is your mission? My mission? Yeah. I don't know. My mission is maybe to explain or to say something about some subject you want to know about that movie or that I know because I don't know everything because I was not all the time on it. But uh, I was very touched from, uh, you know, when I saw the beginning, I saw this costume, mm -hmm. her costume, the white stripes yeah. here. Yeah. And when you see the back of his uh, uh, tank top, uh, 
and the color. He's having orange, she's having white, and then you always play with these two colors. Yeah. And uh, even her, she has the orange on the The uh, orange yeah. on, on her uh, head, and so. Um, how, how, how did you get started with the whole story? So I started, I should say that there is uh, almost all the costume for the important role, I should say, were already uh, scheduled like that. I should say that the one uh, Mila is wearing, for example, the one with the orange, you know, but like a rubber orange, the second one with a little top in white, you know, that one was done for Julia Roberts, so. Uh, the, uh, the thing of uh, uh, Bruce Willis were also thinking about like Mel Gibson, you know? So it was the same thing, I didn't change. But the one she has, the one all white that you saw, that was uh, uh, for Mila. It was another one that I did uh, after, you know? Because it changed a little, the scenario changed, and I, we needed something like, a, you know, like she was like a bandelette, like mummified the story of Egypt at the beginning, and uh, like a mummy, but a modern mummy, a little 60s, you know, like futuristic in some way. So it was a little that mixed of idea. So, so the costume, first, I did it for the different role, you know. So I have some uh, come on, instruction from uh, Luc Besson that uh, come on, uh, told me about the psychology. I read the script first, and after it was a like, little more like specific about like uh, the personage. I should say that the cut of the hair of the girl, of Mila, that was more Luc Besson that uh, make try and uh, he was very much in love with her. So <laughs> maybe practice and so that it was the be most beautiful haircut that it was. The color not, but that, yes, he was. So he was giving also advice. Unlike, uh, uh, for example, for Bruce Willis, I wanted like something like uh, more like a protection, like, you know, a little like the bomber jacket, but seen in a futuristic way, you know, like more like articulation and things like that. Uh, I uh, should say after one for the role of Chris Taker, you can understand and imagine that normally it was for Prince. Yes, I heard. Because uh, you, you <laughs> see a little bones, a black guy, Chris Tucker, which is fantastic, by the way, which is truly like somebody, like uh, truly, he makes like a ca cartoon, cartoonesque personage. He, he makes like, uh, it's, I, in, uh, maybe I couldn't say that, but uh, maybe he should have seen better, but uh, he, uh, Prince could not have done like that role, which is truly like uh, incredible with the voice, with the exaggeration, the speed, you uh, know, it's very unique and very incredible. But the idea was like, uh, TV presenter star, you know, which was uh, at the same time a singer and which was like uh, uh, um, hysterical, of course, and eccentric, you know. So I went on eccentri uh, eccentricity. And at the time, already Prince was like ca kind of in lace and uh, uh, <laughs> having lace and uh, things that were almost like. A, seducing like a woman, let's say, you know, clothes that were a little in between, you know, uh, so. So I was doing more even things like uh, uh, in that way, you know, like making me more extravagant. But if I can tell you, I have a little story which is quite funny about Prince. Because uh, for in the first version, so Prince was supposed to do it. And one day I went to see Luc Besson and uh, he was, uh, uh, come on, uh, Prince was in Paris for his show, to make uh, uh, two shows, uh, and he was doing one the same night. And I was with Luc Besson speaking about the different uh, other outfit, etc., seeing things. And Prince, like he was supposed to do, phone and say, I am here and I should come to see you. So Prince was arriving to the place where was Besson, you know, before his show. And... Uh, the, uh, the thing is that Besson say, okay, Jean-Paul, stay, and you will uh, uh, speak to Prince, and you will see him, and speak to him, and uh, show him a little the costume you are thinking about uh, for him. Okay, so I wait. Uh, so they were with the telephone, he's arriving, uh, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 2 minutes, he's there. So uh, Besson went down, went to take Prince. And me, I was waiting in the, the studio, let's say, like uh, for him to come with uh, Prince. So I wait, I wait 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 long minutes, and at one moment the doors open and <whistles> Prince arrive. 
but like skating, you know, because he was small, but he was uh, uh, walking very quickly, you know. And say hello, hello. So I say hello, Prince. How are you? I welcome. You he went with a bodyguard, and uh, I didn't see Luc Besson. I didn't know where where, where was uh, Luc Besson. So uh, I say, oh, maybe he let me see him to explain the clothes. Maybe he doesn't want. Me. Uh, he doesn't want to be there, like, uh, not disturbed, I don't know. So I started to say, hello, Prince, very nice to see you before you show, ta, ta, ta. And I start to show, uh, come on, the, cl the close the sketches. And I say, that one is like that, that one is like that, that one is like that. And there is one, alors there is the one with the rose, with the flowers. There was the one with the panther, like a uh, panther, you know, with the print like that, with very décolleté. All that was there. And there is one that is not there. <laughs> and that one was like a whole fishnet body, uh, body, total of a roll, with ear like a, like you know, like the hair of Prince, a little curly, you know, no, uh, uh, like Prince, a real Prince, a little curly, like Michael Jackson, but more like shh, like that, very uh, frisé. I don't know how you say that, you know, curly, curly, yeah, curly. very curly, you know. So I put, you know, on that fishnet a little curly toison ear, like curly ear, curly under the arm. A little ear, you know, like to cover like that, and also at the ass. So I explain him that, and I put, I say, it's there and there and there, and here at the ass, it's make like a faux cue, you know, I said, but I tried to say it in a like, faux Like cue. a wrong ass, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I, I tried, that was like in the fashion for the woman uh, in the beginning of last century, you know. So I said like a faux cue, but I say like faux, faux cue, faux cue, like trying to make English <laughs> him to understand. And I saw prints that make like something like, like that. <laughs> and after, bon, just at that moment, uh, uh, come on, Luc Besson arrived and said, hello, Prince, how are you? I just miss you. He didn't see Prince because Prince passed by another way. I don't know how it happened. So he was he just see Prince at that time. Hello, Prince, etc. So they start to speak, and uh, uh, Prince say very quickly like, "Okay, okay. Uh, now I have to go because he, my show will start like that." So I leave. So he left, and after he, so he take his car and makes the concert that I saw just after. And after I learned through, come uh, Luc, that Prince. Phone him and say that first he didn't expect to some see to see someone else than Luke, you know, because uh, because the contract was not seen, and of course he didn't w uh, went to be, you know, because they stopped during two years, like before fi making a, an another version, and and that he was he saw the sketches and he finds that a little feminine and like a little too much gay because he saw that I say. It's like a fuck you <laughs> in the R. So he saw that I say it's like a fuck you. Like so he said mm. <laughs> he was like uh, terrified in reality. I will not say that he didn't do the movie because of uh, my sketches, but I should say that mm, after he has no time to make the movie when it was a second version to do. Fantastic. So in general, <laughs> great, great story. So in general, if you do have the choice, would you like to meet the actor before doing your sketches or uh, doesn't it make any difference to you? I mean, do you kind of cooperate with the actor or the actress or do you have your own idea and just pass it over? I know it's very uh, uh, indispensable, indispensable, like to see the actor because truly it's like the character. So first the actor has to feel good, to feel like it goes with the personnage because he has also in mind, you know, there is Besson that has in mind which kind of personnage he wants. There is the actor which has also how he feels, how he doesn't want to be also sometimes. So I have to respect all that and also what how I see in myself. So it's a mix of the three, you know. Uh, so it is very important, of course. It's even inspiring, you know. And I think also sometimes it's very even like helpful, you know, because of oh, helpful. I will say little uh, detail like that, little gossip. Like for example, like uh, uh, Bruce Willis. You know, I make like, he has, he, he has a very nice body, he's tall and muscular, etc. But at, when I was doing, you know, I was doing like uh, the outfit where he's like a taxi, you know. It's like a trouser which is like a, a, a reinforced paddings, you know, like kind of padding. So I put there and there. And one moment I was doing uh, like padding and I suggest, but discreetly, but he was in the mirror looking at himself for this. So I was saying, you 
put a little on the arse to make like the shape <laughs> more, more round. I, I, I didn't say, but I showed to the one that was with me like that. And he said, yes, yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> because he knows his morphology and because like we add some little in front, he, ha he has to be also like to balance. So he has good sense of himself of what he could need. <laughs> what, is, uh, what do you prefer, doing um, uh, costumes for a fantasy movie like uh, Fifth Element, or uh, do you also like doing um, costumes for realistic movies, you know, uh, inspired by day-to-day uh, -day life? What I should say, of course, is like uh, to be uh, my test about movie, about movie, I don't speak about the clothes. It's more like realistic and like more like uh, between psychological, between people, you know, like very social movie like that, you know, like more realistic, let's say. But, but it's true that for creativity of clothes, I prefer to do like more like a spectacular and something like more dreamy, let's say. Me, to be honest, I was not super fan, apart maybe like Dune and some uh, uh, science fiction movie. But what interests me in, uh, about that one, it was the fact that first I have a freedom of creativity more than in a more like a ordinary, but not in a bad way, movie, you know. And also the fact that it was Besson that was doing it. So it was, you can see even like a, I could play like, for example, like with the McDonald, you have seen like to make like the head with the air, like a, the uh, stewardess, you know, it was quite funny to do, to play with uh, all. No, I, I, I have a lot of fun, you know, I can invent. But I should say sometimes it's very interesting also to go to something like more natural, uh, very, uh, for example, with Almodovar. Almodovar. What, what, what is more difficult? Between the two, mm -hmm. I think it's quite more, it's become more difficult, I should say, like to make like regular, more normal uh, movie clothes. Why? Because you have there, there it's very, uh, the subtlety and very psychological. So sometimes your way to see a social type, let's say, uh, dressing in that way, uh, it's in reality more the, the directors that can could know if he knows the language of the uh, of the clothes, you know, because it's him that wants the psychology of the personage to be like that and like that, you know. So it's uh, the subtlety. It's like a dialogue in reality. It's more a dialogue and also to feel how the actor, like I said before, but that is very very important. The actor, how we feel in it and how we see that is too much. We go like uh, even you know like for for example for the the one the Fre in the Friedrich Palace, you know, I did like for the one one of the first role, you know, the guy, which is, a, it was like to see like he was more in a normal, a normal, quite of normal guy, you know, of today. And uh, so it was not to be too much, not to be, you know, like uh, not an extravaganza, but at the same time, one group of type social. And uh, uh, so it's interesting, but it's more subtlety, you know, it's not like uh, uh, to, to have fun, like to do it. It's more interesting because psychological. And uh, well, here you had the opportunity uh, to really create a world of the future or costumes, yeah. uh, uh, costumes of the future. What was the challenge of uh, inventing future uh, costume wise? Uh, what was the challenge? It was to go. The challenge was like, we don't know what will be the future. Because the future, in reality, comes from what will happen socially, uh, economically, l like today. Today is the result of what is happening in the world. You know, uh, uh, fashion, let's say, because I am supposed to, to show what will wear the people in the future, you know. Uh, me, uh, come on, me, I was, uh, uh, but fashion of today is the result of what's happening. We are in a chaos now, economic chaos, so the fashion is a little chaos at the moment, you know. We are asking a lot of interrogation on the, what are the clothes, for what are the clothes, how much be, uh, how, uh, cost must be uh, the cost of one outfit, you know. So it's so, so economic problem. The punk, mo punk movement, which was a fashion also, uh, 
was something social, you know? So it's, it has repercussion after at the end about like, for example, the black, to be dressed in black, all that, you know, it was a negation of this, how was the society at that moment, rebellion, you know? So all that makes changement of fashion. So in the future, uh, in the future we have to think what could be the future. Me For the what, next year. Yeah, uh, no, but I mean like in the science fiction movie, what will be the real future, you know? Me, I was thinking, and I think like uh, uh, Luke was all right also with that, that it should be like a mix of different ethnic, mix of uh, even some different period, you know, and uh, something like an idea of futuristic mixed with all that, you know. So it was, uh, uh, it was not maybe like radical in one way, it was more like uh, what the world is going to be now, like mixed uh, of people, like, you like know. Like future always plays with the past. Exactly. In a way. And also influenced by the present, always, you know. I think even in all the, uh, uh, the futuristic movies that I saw, you know, it's always influenced by past and by sometimes medieval, some other, but re a review, you know, and sometimes uh, also at the same time the things that are going on at the moment, you know, like I remember once Age of Crystal or so, sim something like that. It was more like 70s EP, like uh, uh, vision, you know, review in, a, in some way, you know. So it's always made of, uh, anyway, we cannot invent a, a, a real, real, uh, uh, come on, new clothes. Uh, uh, in reality, we do things that uh, re recycle and make it in a way with some sensibility of the moment. So, and, and, and what is for you, how would you describe the difference uh, or even uh, the similarities between fashion and uh, costume design? Alors, I should say that uh, the, uh, I should say uh, it depends on the movie. <laughs> so, it depends on your story. You did very uh, different ones, yeah. Yes, I did different ones with Almodova, also, uh, come on, um, Peter Greenaway, Greenaway, which is very different. On Caro and Genet, we did uh, Amélie Poulain, but that was for uh, uh, Des Enfants Perdus. Oh, I don't remember. The, uh, of la, 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 la. Pardon? Les Enfants du Perdu. J'ai oublié. The children of the, je ne sais pas quoi. Oh my God. Something. Hein? Pas Lille. It's not the. No, it's not the town. Les enfants de l'Arche perdus. Non. Exactement. La cité des enfants perdus. Oh my God. <laughs> Between the, my English and my French, at the time I was thinking in English, maybe a little. So, bon, voilà. Merci beaucoup. Voilà, somebody that knows very well. So, I mean, like, it was different because each one also, because I should say the director I work with, I love them also, and I was fan of them. Why? Because they have their own world, like, uh, uh, let's say, um, aesthetic, you know, they have a vision aesthetic. They were very like uh, uh, knowing like, which colors they love for the, also for the light and for the, all the atmosphere, you know, like uh, Caro and Genet, uh, they were like very much already on the turquoise, on the uh, blood uh, red, you know, mixed together with a little yellowish past 50s uh, cinemascope, uh, uh, you know, uh, colors, you know, which I love uh, also. So it was uh, fantastic. Almodova, bright color, bright color, and like, he was like very specific, like for the outfit for Kika of Rosie Di, pa Di Palma, he wanted that she has an apron of the uh, 60s, I think, yes, it was 60s, of a housewife of the 60s of Valencia in Spain. I try like to make to with Paul Codot. I try to make like a like that. No, no, no. It was not that. At the end, it's him that find one that he liked. You know, uh, uh, in all the thing because I didn't know what was the reference of uh, Balencia sixties uh, uh, housewife. You know, I he could imagine, but it was not the right thing that he has in head. So sometimes, you know, they are very specific. I don't know for why I answered. To, uh, uh, what was the question? Sorry. I, I don't remember either. Uh, <laughs> No, but um, 
usually when you're as a fashion designer, you yeah. make all these decisions. That means yeah, you're kind of the yes, director. That so that's difference. very, that, uh, yeah, I think uh, that was the question. What is well, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, difference yeah, between difference fashion between designer and uh, costume exactly. designer? Exactly. When I am fashion designer, I am the, uh, the one that is directing. I, it's my own story that I make, you know, my own story about the collection that will be, for example, the, the tattoo collection, etc. You know, it can be one team like that. There, it's the story of the director, of course. Uh, and there is the actor and the psychology of the actor. So I have to work for one, uh, one book in some way, you know, for, for one movie. Uh, so I have to go to that way and to treat it in my way. So it's a mixing. But I should say that it's like, let's say, 50-50, let's say. Uh, a percent of myself, but that I put, but I love that. It's very interesting because it brings me in a, a new kind of adventure. For me, it's like a story there. I love to discover the, the scenario, to imagine it, and to, uh, and after to think which clothes are, but I like to propose and I like to work with because I think it's like for me very. Uh, an enrichment, like to ma it make me spiritual. An enrichment, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I think it's interesting to go a little in the brain of the director and to see what he has in mind. Because I should say, for example, Mr. Besson, Luc Besson, himself in the real life, he has not quite a great test, I should say. But <laughs> 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 well, I, I know, I mean, like I saw something like that. It's like, mm -mm. but when it's arrived to the movie, there. It's truly like it's extraordinary. It's like living truly the movie. For example, when he tells you the story, you are like, uh, like you know all the story because he knows already. He has in head all the Im the image of the personage. He knows very well how he wants. For example, for uh, uh, the subway in subway, he, he bleached the air of uh, the come on, um, come on, what is his name? Oui, voilà, Christophe Lambert, yes, of Christophe Lambert, you know, he, he, he sees Mila, he wanted her with orange hair, you know, uh, after you can do, but he has some specific, Almodovar also, the color, can you imagine, like the apron, so they have, a, uh, but him, especially, he become very, like, a, because maybe he loves also, like, bande dessinée, which is like, how do you say, bande dessinée? Uh, uh, comics. Comics, yes, Comics. he loves that, you know, so he's very much into like a more like, let's say, a specific personage, you know, that he tried to make it sort of visually more strong, you know, so there he become like to have like a truly like you can have a discussion and if he says something, I can listen to him because he knows what he's, he's speaking about, you know. In real life, he's different. <laughs> so which means that cinema makes, uh, makes uh, every, everything magical, no? And, and for you, is cinema, or has cinema always been some kind of an inspiration for your work as a fashion designer? Ah, but totally. Like I told you, because, uh, yes, first, I make a uh, fashion because I saw a movie about, uh, but a movie, so it was a movie with the light, with the heroine, on the fashion show, which was in the movie, you know, and I saw it, and it was, like, beautiful. And I remember... You mean uh, what, you, what you watched on TV? You said what I you watched said in, in TV. the beginning. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So that, of course, it's influenced me. In reality, I didn't want, I think, to make fashion. I wanted to make what he was doing him in the movie, not to have the same story completely, because at the end he's suicide. So, <laughs> boy, it's not, uh, it was not for me that. But, but, but the rest, you know, all that uh, on the people around, I wanted to leave that. And I remember that first time after Pierre Cardin that I work. Uh, I work at Patou, and I was saying, oh, it's like in Falbala, because that was the title of the movie. Oh, Falbala, that's it's by uh, Jacques Becker. Jacques, exactly. Ah, yeah, beautiful la. movie. It was yeah. very well, because yes. that movie is not so known. Yes, uh, very, so known. very beautiful and movie. And it was like incredible, because the description, I must say, how director can be good and incredible, is after when I went to work at Jean Patou, which was an old house, and I felt it was like exactly Falbala, with the people, the directrice of the couture, the woman of the atelier, the premier d'atelier, all the people were exactly the same kind of person that I recognized in the movie, you know? It was incredible how cleverly he did it. I don't know, I think it, enfin, I know a little, because after I have the chance like, to meet the actress, the principal actress, which now is 90, 94 years old, Micheline Prell, which is still alive, and I met her like uh, 20 years ago, 
And uh, I say, oh, it's because of you that I did that, uh, my collection and I, uh, what I am, you know. And uh, uh, I remember after I learned through her that because Jacques Becker was very friend with one couturier, Marcel Rocha, ah. and that he, he, he so he, he takes a lot of things out what he saw and looking at it. But I must say that even some people that are sometimes friends and can see, they don't see well sometimes, him, he saw exactly and knew how to show it and to make it feel to the people what was happening in the, uh, in the house of couture. So of course, cinema completely influenced me. Me, I wanted to do fashion show like in that movie. I wanted to be like the one of the movie and to have news like the actress Micheline Prels of the movie. And after, I was influenced by, of course, fashion in movie. Old movie, like for example, Les, In Rock, Les Incorruptibles, you know, the, er 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 the one of um, Scorsese. You know, 50s uh, uh, gangster of mafia, you know. The Untouchables? Well, uh, uh, no, that no. was one of no. Scorsese, but one long, uh, long time before. Well, anyway, it's 50s uh, jacket and uh, things like that, you know, I was influenced by that. Also, I it was a time, uh, it's upon the time in the West, you know. With Once a upon a time, yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, with a long Sergio coat, Leone. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, come on, one with uh, Faye Dunaway and Warren Beatty, Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, I mean, like, uh, even like uh, more uh, Fassbinder, Querelle de Brest, of course. Of course, it influ influenced me. I should say maybe the one that influenced me the more, with the sailor and etc. Of course, I, I did a collection with a, 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 around Corel de Bresse in 82, I, I did that, you know. So I, I have been always influenced by that. You know, I make it my way, but I have something from cinema that attract me. I say, yes, yes, that is always. And, and, and all these films you were talking about um, are quite, well, mostly quite glamorous. Yeah. Uh, do uh, did cinema in the past years uh, kind of lose glamour? I think that depends on the director. I think because there is some uh, director that can do like uh, you know, even if you uh, you show real life, I think that is good that is seen uh, by uh, by somebody that. Uh, as an aesthetic sense, you know, because even he make real life not like seen in a way that he can show the beauty, you know. For example, I will tell you an example. For me, there is no ugly, no, no, no beautiful. I think that it depends in which way you see it. When I did like my can bracelet, you know, like a can, you know, like boîte de conserve, I did that because I say, ah, oh, it's a can of uh, petit pois, of uh, beans, you know, but, 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 it can be like a bracelet of African bracelet. So I mean, it's the same when you see even like something like very poor. There is beauty sometimes in the poor. It's like playing with uh, what reality gives you. It's it's not it's not maybe uh, to play, but it's to show that there is beauty everywhere. And for example, I will tell you like uh, there is somebody like uh, uh, Odiar, you know. Uh, Mich non, Michel, Michel ou Jacques Jacques Audiard. Jacques Audiard. Uh, yeah, uh, Audiard Un prophète, uh, well, par exemple. Uh, exactement. Right. Or on the one, like the uh, last one of... Uh, um, the, uh, not the, uh, is the last one that he did No, it's not the last one. The one before... No, no, no. Avec, the avec lequel one. il a gagné Cannes Uh, so when uh, he win yeah. can, yeah, uh, Dijan, Dijan, Dijan a yeah. name like that. It's yeah. like about, uh, mm. about uh, that about actuality, what can it be more? The story is like immigrants that arrive from Pakistan or some country like that, you know, not Syria, but uh, from a country like that. And they arrive, they are a couple with a, uh, a couple, uh, a man and a woman, and with a, a daughter, you know. And, and, and in reality, they are not the uh, the father the mother and the son they are in reality like him he was like a one fighting for his country in pakistan etc and like uh, going away from the war you know but 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 some that are in france wanted to recuperate him you know so it's a fake fake family and bon, uh, that's the story which is like truly in uh, with what's happening around now you know like uh, speaking about that you know so it was two years ago and uh, uh, even nobody like spoke after about it like how it was like uh, something that can happen now you know but anyway but he show because those they were going to the suburb 
the truly like the le, let's say like the part which has the most like uh, poor and etc. You know, so they were there, and you was how the way it was filmed, it was beautiful. Anyway, aesthetically I speak, huh? and beautiful also the story. Uh, the story was very beautiful, but I mean like you can see a show thing in a way which is nice, and I think is what I am expecting from cinema. Me, as a fan of cinema, I, I, I like that. A little, like, you know, it's like uh, hyper-realism, you know? It's not the realism, you know? So the cinema... Uh, Which can be more real, even. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah voilà. Yes. So I think it's yes. that, in or, reality, or the cinema. It's hyper-realism. Yeah. When it is that, it has to be, uh, by the sense, what it says and what it shows. It can be... Uh, and it become like beautiful and interesting, or I, interesting. I, I would have so many more questions. I just got a sign that we have to come to an end. So I'm, I just would like, would like to, answer, uh, to ask you one last question. Uh, this film, Fifth Element, was considered as being uh, Luc Besson's masterpiece. Oh yeah. And uh, so is there anything in your work, uh, whether it be uh, costume design, fashion design, uh, where you would say that is my p masterpiece, one special dress, one special film, one special collection, whatever. Or do you say, no, I'm, I'm a fashion designer, what, what, what's back doesn't interest me, I'm just uh, moving forward uh, to the next collection. I, I should answer by the two <laughs> answer. It's the two answer. It means like uh, I am always interested, but what's new and, uh, is that why I, I went like to to do even the Friedrich Palace. For me, it's like my, maybe my best collection in some way, you know. But uh, I should say at the same time that the thing from my past, the collection my, by my past that I did, on that uh, uh, I like is the ones that in reality. People can I identify me in reality. Is you know I did that profession like to be loved through my collection. So the ones that people prefer, like for example my sailor type uh, for men and the corset for uh, uh, the women that are my favorite because people love them. So they love me through that. Fantastic. Voilà. <laughs>